Hey family, it's Tasha Mom Bear Prepping. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I just want to chit chat with you a little bit. My apologies for not being here the last couple days, not releasing videos. We have a lot of stuff happening at our house. Just trying to get things ready, trying to get things buttoned up here. And things are moving fast and, uh, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I, I just absolutely do not have time. Um, so apologies for that. Let's get back into it. I want to talk about something that I've seen that's disturbing and that's the making it normal or normalizing the food crisis, right? And some of you might say, Tasha, food crisis. Oh my gosh, food crisis. That sounds so extreme. You know, when you talk about food crisis and starvation and famine and you start using these words it's just like people turn it off and they're, they're like this is ridiculous i can go to the store and even some of you are like really food crisis like we can get food we're fine everything's fine right and that's what i'm talking about right right there is what i'm talking about that normalcy that everything is fine there are no changes um there's no changes in our food. There's nothing that's been happening to our food. Um, we, we have zero concerns because we as the consumers right now can go to the grocery store and we can get food. And you should be concerned because because you are normalizing it, you're letting that like complacency set in that, hey, it's fine. And you're basically okaying as things are happening. You know, um, our food is being destroyed. You know, you have weather events that are that are affecting stuff. You know, we've been talking about shortages and food shortages and things that are different about our food. Um, foods expiring super fast, um, quantities of food being bad, quality of food being bad. And because you can right now go to the grocery store and for the most part, get everything your little heart desires, you're going to continue to be like, okay, it's fine. Everything is fine. But we have seen the signs. If you're watching, the signs are there. The flags are there of concern that you should be paying attention to and, you know, really just making sure that your family is covered down for when this goes too far, right? Um, eventually, it will catch up to a point um, and to a pace where people start truly noticing like, whoa, where's the food going? What's happening? And by then it's, it's really too late because by the time something happens or something pushes it really off the cliff to where, you know, the masses are starting to see stuff, it, it's too late by then because now you're going to have panic setting in. You're going to have everybody and their mother buying whatever's left. Okay. Um, and this is a battle, you know, you have, train wrecks, you have car crashes, truck crashes, um, you know, fires happening, you have floods and weather events that are affecting crops, droughts, you have foreign conflicts that are affecting stuff, imports, exports, you have supply chain stuff, you have the, you know, we, we worried a lot about the supply chain when we had such a big issue, I don't know, about a year and a half ago, with the backups, right, and the strikes and the this and that of the of the different ports and stuff. You guys, that stuff's still happening. That stuff's still going on, right? And so it's concerning. It's concerning because those things are not a problem, right, to the average person until it's a problem, right, until it's too late, right? And so we, as people who prepare, should just be mindful of all these things that are still happening and doing everything in your power to prepare your family and to get the ingredients, to get whole ingredients, food, real food, and be stockpiling it, right? Whatever that real food looks like for you guys, rices, beans, pastas, right? Canned meats, meats, learning how to preserve food so that it will last the longest on your shelves, pressure canning meat, pressure canning soups, right? Getting that stuff already made, make it up, and preserve it, getting your baking stuff, your flours, your sugars, your yeast, all of that stuff, right? Stockpiling it, stockpiling your hygiene stuff. This goes beyond food, but food I hit on so much because we need food to live, right? And food, they're literally trying to destroy the food around us. Like they literally want to take the food away and bioengineer food for us, right? They want to make a product that is not food and give it to us 
in the form of food, right? And control us. And this whole, you know, everything. This is, you know, I'm going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole real quick. This is the stuff we talk about on Patreon more than we do here. But they want to control us, right? And they want to make us do what they want. And for example, a vaccine, you don't want to take a vaccine. Great. We'll buy an engineer some head of lettuce and you can get it that way, right? We want to change your DNA so we can manipulate you and make you do what we want you to do, right? There's very, very evil, evil people out there that want to cause us harm, that want to control us, that want to control the way our, we think, what we do, right? They do not want us to be healthy and they do not want us to be competent and think for ourselves and work and have this work ethic and um, to just be, right? To just be on this green earth as God intended us to be, right? It's a battle and that battle is going to get worse, right? And foods play such a big piece of that because everybody needs it. You need it to live. And you can control, they can control us with that. And they will control the masses with food. And they're already doing things. You know, people are like, I would never do the digital currency. I would never, ever, ever do that. That will be the, 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 the line in the sand. I will fight, I will fight. No, you won't. The average person is not going to fight that because it's going to be wrapped up in food where you cannot get food. You can't buy a loaf of bread without being in that system, right? So are you ready? Are you ready for that battle? Christians, are you ready for that battle, right? I'm talking to you, right? I'm talking to those who are planning to fight and say they're going to fight. You know, what are you going to do when the food is gone and it's bioengineered and you haven't prepared and you haven't learned the skill set to grow it, to hunt it, to raise it, whatever, to, to get food, to preserve food before it's gone, right? Or a situation just happens, a crisis, a natural event happens that throws it over the edge and all of a sudden it's a problem and there's no food and people can't get food. And how do you do that? Normalizing it. I mean, we're dealing with inflation. I, I don't know about you, but I've we've been living, and this is the thing, you live off your preps, right? It should be regular rotation, this is your lifestyle. This isn't like you just stockpile food and that's it. You leave it, right? You should always be stock um, rotating it and it's part of your normal life. But I'm going to keep it real. And, and I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there like me, but we have been utilizing that stuff, right? We have buy, been buying less from the store. Some of that because of preservatives, because of the trust. There, I, I'm getting to the point where I don't trust the food coming out of the stores these days. I don't trust the meat coming out of the stores these days. And so... Um, I'm getting to the point where I don't trust it, but you know, I'd be a fool if I don't think that part of me falling back on buying stuff is because I'm prepared and I already have it and I'm falling back on that, but it's money. It's, it's this normalcy that nothing's going on, but it is going on. It is hurting people, right? People are making decisions to not eat certain foods, to not get certain foods anymore, to not eat out, to not go to restaurants, to just cut out whole things out of their diets because it's too expensive, Right. Um, you know, or they, they got something before they can't get it now. Now we're not seeing a whole lot of that. It's really just, um, companies catering down to like, say they have a flavor of uh, an easy thing is just potato chips and snacks, right? You might have a snack, a brand, and it's offered in a bunch of flavors and companies to save money. They've just cut off several flavors, let's say. And so, yeah, it's like an inconvenient thing. You're looking for something specific and that company has decided to take that off the shelf and you don't have it. Right. But you know, it's not as bad to say that, oh, well, you can't get the item, right? But we're going to get to a point where, and because we're being so normal about it and normalizing and like, oh, it's not that bad. And, you know, we're just dealing with it. It's, it's adapting, Tasha. You're supposed to adapt to your environment around you. So what, right? So what the quality right now is not the best, you know, um, but we still have it. So be blessed, right? And I am, I do feel blessed that we have food and that you can still go to the grocery store today and get for the most part what you want and what you need, right? But my concern is that we are, we are playing around with being so complacent about the things that are happening around us that have to do with our food that, you know, we actually have dummies who are going to be like, once it's turned off, like, what's happening? What's, where's the food? And they're going to just go to the streets and just be rioting and be so mad and it's like why do all that and spend your energy doing that when you can spend your energy now getting ready preparing stockpiling some food baby i don't care if you're on a fixed income and you're putting away an extra can every payday and that's all you can do then that's what you do right 
find something that's on sale and get that extra 99 cent can of something, right? I don't care whatever it is that you can afford to do. And let me tell you, fixed income, I'm going, I'm looking on Marketplace for free stuff. I'm, I'm downloading free apps to get free stuff. I'm asking if they'll deliver because a lot of people are like, I'm fixed income. I can't leave. I don't have a car. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm this, I'm that, right? I hear excuses. And it's not to just say, oh, I hear excuses. Baby, you can do anything you put your heart to, okay? Ask for help. Um, a lot of people, well, I don't have help, right? Um, but you're watching me, so that means you have a phone, right? That means you could download free apps. That means you could, there's people that will give away stuff and bring it to you, right? Not everybody, but there is people that will bring it to you, especially if you're like, hey, I really need this. I'm in a wheelchair, don't have a car, can, can, you know, whatever, right? I don't know, right? You have to be careful also, right? But there's different things, marketplace, you know, you must get out at some point and go shopping. You know, it, who is who is taking you to do that, right? Maybe you guys can swing by the thrift store and grab some stuff. Maybe you have a, a friend or somebody who does garage sale and you can go with them. I don't know. All I know is that I'm a survivalist by heart um, and I literally could have nothing and I'm going to survive. I'm going, I don't care. You could be like, let's just go to the mountains. Is it going to be extremely difficult, extremely hard? Yes. Everything in life is hard, right? Um, but you can do it. You know why? Because most of it, 99% of it is this, right? It's mindset, okay? Plus, if you got God, you're good. I mean, you can do anything, right? Anything, anything, right? So stop being complacent. Stop making everything be so normal. I mean, they're manipulating our weather, you guys, and that affects our food, right? I mean, all of the things that are happening are affecting our food, and eventually it's going to catch up, right? We're seeing signs, but if you don't choose to see them, it just looks like, well, everything's fine. I'm going to get comments right on this video today. People like, well, you've been talking about food for years. Oh, the food, the food, the food, the shortage, the shortage. And I haven't seen nothing. You know, you're just, this is the same old crap that you be talking every day just to get some views or something. Let me tell you, I could care less about views. I could care less about, you know, how many subscribers I have, baby. Those days have passed. I, I don't care. You know why? Because that's not a priority in my life, right? This channel is not a priority. The uh, amount of views I'm getting per video or, is not a priority at all at all okay um because i'm choosing not to make it normal and i want to keep my eyes open i want to keep watching for stuff i want to keep repairing um i, I want to keep moving forward and doing the things that we need to do to move forward with me and my family which is what we're doing right now right and hopefully that is what you guys are doing as well. You're concentrating, you're going through your inventories, you're taking a look at what you have, you're continuing to make your list, you're continuing to think long-term outside the box, shoot for six months at first, then shoot for a year worth of stuff, then shoot for two years, um, shoot for long-term and, and how does that, how do you transition from buying stuff to then growing it, finding it, foraging it, hunting it, raising it, um, how do you change the way that you're getting your food so that you can continue to, to get that even when the system turns off and they turn on some other kind of system that's not even food, okay? Um, because people need that. People need that to, li to actually live, right? And so um, it's very, very scary if you get to the point where you have not prepared and now you are dependent on the system, okay? So... Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Again, apologies for not having a video the last couple days. It's been really busy. Um, also, Patreon, again, if you like to go down the rabbit hole, you you like um, me telling you my opinion about different things from different angles, different viewpoint, and going a little bit further and talking about a lot more than we talk about over here, um, and you want to support me in a monetary way, Patreon is how you do that. Um, and so I will see you guys over there for my patrons. I'll see you guys tomorrow on your video. Um, I do videos over there three days a week. If you're curious too, I do them Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. So you guys be well, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this video and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.